Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Shona Virtue. Oh, and by the way, welcome back if you have been here before. Today is all about your hips. Lucky that my hips are falling, hammer. So you don't have hands in the mountains. Oh, that's about the boobs. I did it wrong. Anyway, it's about your hips. So we aren't just doing a passive hip opening stretch, which is what I'm sure a lot of you were hoping for. But if you want true benefits, by the way, skip to this if you have watched this intro before and you're just coming here to do the sequence again. Those of you that haven't, listen up. Alrighty, so we're working on both stability and flexibility. And this is key in order to keep our joints and our body safe. So what it means is that we're actually working on mobility, which is why it is a yo yoga mobility sequence. And it's really, really important that we do a mix or a range of exercises that are cultivating your passive flexibility or your passive range and your active range. Because what's the point in having flexibility if you have no stability or ability to actually use that range? This particular sequence is going to challenge you a little bit, a lot actually, and there are gonna be times where you're gonna wanna throw things at me, swear at me, uh, and I'm okay with that because I'm not really in the room with you. But I want you to push on through and try this sequence consistently for at least four weeks. I promise you, you're gonna see huge improvements to your mobility and to your range. And that's the end of the story. Alrighty, we're gonna begin on our backs with our block underneath our hips. I'll show you where to place it. You have to play around with the positioning a little bit, but I want you to take your feet hip distance apart as though you're coming into a bridge position. Lift your hips just enough so that you can get the block underneath. And then where you're placing it is actually on your sacrum, so it's about here. And then from there, what I'd like you to do is just allow your arms to rest by their side. Take the left leg and straighten it. The right foot is just sort of supporting you a little bit here. And we've got this nice extension. And I just want you to feel as though your leg is sort of being gently pulled with gravity away from your hip. And then from here, we're gonna start to hug the right knee in. And as we hug that right knee in, you don't even need to go very far. You'll already start to feel the torque, the kind of pull that you get on this side as you're hugging this knee in, okay? So just really, a really slow, easy, passive stretch here. Close your eyes and just breathe. This is just to open us up so that when we come into some of the other positions, we're a little bit more open through, particularly the front of the hips. If you've been spending a lot of time in chairs, which is, guess what, a lot of us, then this one will be quite delicious to be doing. I also invite you to go ahead and just move the left ankle around in the joint, and then we'll go the other direction. Notice if you're gathering tension anywhere else in the body, so try to relax your face, your jaw, your mouth. Then we'll take another deep breath in, still the ankle. Exhale, see if you can start to hug that knee in more. Notice I'm sort of letting the hip twist a little and that's okay because I want to just continue to lengthen out here. Okay, and then we'll place that left heel down and we'll switch sides. So first things first, just start to straighten the leg. By the way, if you're feeling anything kind of crunchy in here, it feels uncomfortable, feels more in your back, less in the front of your hip, lift your hips and move that block down a little bit more, okay? So we're getting some lengthening and then we're just gonna increase that length by hugging the left knee in. Oh, oh gosh, I haven't done this one in a while, it's a good one. Breathing deeply, just noticing that stretch sensation. We're in a passive position, but we are gonna do some activation work for the hip flexors and everything that flexes the hips. <laughs> That's what a hip flexor is. Inhaling and exhaling. Relax the jaw, the eyes, the face. Notice that as I exhale, I try to allow the lower back to relax as well. All right, let's take the ankle around in circles, or the foot toes around in circles. We're trying to sort of 
Move the ankle through its full range here. At the same time, you should feel like there's a little bit of an increase in the stretch as you really push the right heel away. Let's go the other direction. Okay. And then we'll give a little bit more of a pull on that left side. Oh, so good. All right. And then release, place the right foot down, place both legs down, lift your hips off, and then release all the way down. Roll your spine one vertebra at a time. Go ahead, hug the knees into the chest. Squeeze them in, start to rock from side to side. Keep holding the right leg in, let the left leg extend all the way down to the floor. Take the leg across the body and come into a twist. Now, actually, before you come into the twist, what I'd like you to do is roll all the way onto your side and hold on to your right knee with your left hand. From there, the top arm, we're gonna take it up as high as we possibly can. So I want you to really reach as high as you can, feeling as though you're reaching out of the hip. And then we're gonna exhale into the twist a little bit more. Inhale. Exhale into it. Inhale, reaching up. Notice I'm really trying to hit the lat here. I'm trying to really extend and open up. Exhale into the twist. And as I come into the twist, I'm keeping this actively pressing down as I reach into the twist. Good. Use your core to bring it back to center. And we'll change sides. So go ahead, hug the knee in, extend, and take it across the body down to the floor. So from here, I'm gonna take that top arm, I'm gonna reach it up high. And as I reach it up high, I'm feeling as though the pelvis is moving down. So we're getting this deep stretch through the side body and then exhaling into the twist. Okay, and as I exhale into the twist, I'm pushing the knee into the hand. You'll find that it actually makes it harder, okay? So inhale, reaching up, exhale into the twist. Push down into that hand, knee into hand. Inhale, exhale, knee into hand. Good, use your core, bring it back to center. Okay, lifting the head and shoulders, I want you to take your hands, grab hold around the front of the feet, bring the feet in together, use your elbows to push the knees out wide. If you can get your head back down onto the floor, that's awesome. Some of you are gonna find this is super easy. And so if you wanna deepen the stretch a little bit more, creep your fingers to the outer edges of your feet and hang here, trying to get your scapula on the floor, your back flat on the floor. If you feel like you can go further still, kick the feet up towards the ceiling, happy baby pose. Yeah, so at the same time, if you come into happy baby and you end up like this, that's not a happy baby, okay? Happy babies would have their backs on the floor, okay? So I want you to press your spine down to the floor, your pelvis down to the floor, and keep the shoulders away from the ears here. Breathing deeply, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. All right, bring the legs back and together, hug the knees into the chest. Let's rock up and down the spine. We'll rock a couple of times actually, massaging out either side of the back, getting us ready because we want to build enough momentum to rock all the way up, hands to the floor, come into downward facing dog, straight in, walk out through the heels, open up through the back of the legs, walk it out and just pay attention to any tightness you're feeling. Let's shake out the head yes and no. How's your down dog position here? What, what's going on in the weight distribution? I want you to make sure that you're gripping into all 10 fingers. You're not just dumping all the weight into the wrist. So really press into the fingers here. I want your arms active. So not kind of just like dumping into the joints. Yeah, I want you to feel like everything's muscularly <laughs> supported. <laughs> not a word. Okay, supported by your, your muscles. Okay, so we're active here. Okay, now inhale, come forward into a push-up position. Hold your high push-up and just find that position, that supported hollow body position. Again, gripping into all 10 fingers so we're not just dumping the weight into the wrists. Tailbone tucks, glutes are squeezed, belly draws in, chin tucks in. Hold it here, breathe in, breathe out. 
Good, drop the knees down to the floor. Take them nice and wide, toes together, push the hips to the heels. And again, we'll come back into a nice deep hip opening for our child's pose, yeah? So in fact, take your knees even wider and take the feet apart a little bit as well. Now we almost feel like you're trying to sit right down to the floor. So I want you to get your balls to the floor, okay? Here we go other bits, okay? <laughs> I'm aiming to get my hips right down is the point I'm trying to make. Now for some of you, you might have restriction in your feet, yeah? That's okay, don't try to push too hard. In fact, if you start to come forward a little bit, it'll take the pressure off the feet and really you'll feel it through the inner thighs. Another passive stretch here, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. If you don't exhale fully and completely and really commit to it on a, a mental and emotional level, that exhalation, then the physical uh, relaxation can't occur properly here. So I want you to make sure that you really commit to every breath, trying to connect to the dynamic of it. So the inhalation is energizing and the exhalation has a sense of relaxation to it. And really try to embody that in all parts of your being, not just the physical. Inhale, come forward, all fours position, bring the knees back together. Spread the fingers nice and wide. Let's go into hip extension or bent knee hip extension. So I want you to keep everything nice and stable here and you're just gonna kick the heel up towards the ceiling. Notice I don't do this. So keeping everything still. We're just gonna go for 20 reps. Three, four, five. You can even use your hand just to check that your glutes are activating. Eight, and make sure that nothing's moving through here. Nine, 10, push the floor away. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Move it out to the side and come into what's called abduction. Yeah, bring the leg back in and then out to the side. So adduction, abduction. Three, four, five. Not like this. Yeah, eight, still. Nine, you want just the glute to work. 10, 11, 12, and the core to stay really tight. 14, 15, push the floor away. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Other side. Let's go. One, core tight. Two, push the floor away. Three, four, mind the muscles. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Think about pushing through the heel. 12, 13, 14, chin in. 15, 16. How's your back? 17, none of this. 18, no. 19, 20. Move it out to the side for abduction. Just watch that this doesn't happen. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Be very honest about how much range you have. Keep going. Seven, eight. If I don't compensate nine, 10 with my hips, then I only have this much. And that is your mobility, yeah? Not your flexibility. You may have great flexibility, Keep going two more. But this whole sequence, good release, is all about flexibility and stability, which is mobility. Let's take the hands down, come into downward facing dog. Walk out through the heels, open up through the back of the legs. Okay, let's move on with the vinyasa. Inhale, come forward to high push up here. Hold it, pull the shoulders away from the ears, squeeze the glutes, let's go exhale. If you need to lower the knees, go ahead. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale, just to cobra. Feel your posterior chain, all the posterior muscles activating here. Hands come back down. If you're taking upward dog, keep your back active as you push. Exhale, move back into downward facing. Inhale, come forward again. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, open it up. If you're taking this, come up, these hips, thighs off. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
Inhale, high push up. Exhale, take it down. Inhale. Activate that posterior chain. Hold it there. Keep that activation as you come into up dog. Exhale, downward dog. Release and walk the feet up towards the hands. Come and hang out in ragdoll here. So make sure your feet are up and hip distance apart. Bend at the knees. Take hold of by the elbow and just shake out your head. Yes and no. Inhaling and exhaling. Swing the body from side to side. Start to find a pace for that breath. We're gonna move into sun salutations to build a little bit of heat before we take on more hip opening and hip strengthening. Release the arms. Fingertips come together. Uh, toes come together, not fingertips. Although in yoga they feel like fingertips because you wanna be really gripping. Now halfway lift here, inhale. As you exhale, Draw the belly in. Use the strength of this compression to come down. So imagine you can't use your hands to pull in. You wanna use that sort of vacuum. And that's the strength of your abs and your flexion. Come all the way up to standing, inhale. Arms reach up, bring the palms together. Exhale, bring the hands back to the heart. Relax the shoulders and go ahead and pull out your wedgie. I have to do it every single time. And my front wedgie, <laughs> okay? Alrighty, so feet together at the top of the mat. Take a deep breath in. Release a full breath out. Very pedantic about Tadasana. There is so much to this pose. I don't care if you think I'm talking too much, I want you to pay attention to it every single time you come to this posture. Feet together, heels very slightly apart. Put your awareness into your feet right now. And just notice where the pressure is. This all plays a part in how healthy your hips are. Your awareness of your feet and how they relate to the ground is going to travel up through the body and affect your hips and your knees, even all the way up into your spine. So please make sure that there's even pressure in what we call sort of like four points of the feet. The ball of the foot on the inside, the outside, just the, below your pinky, and then two kind of corners on the outer edges of your heel. We want to feel like our arches have lifted. That's just the feet. Okay, and then from there, traveling up through, we want to feel as though we engage the quadriceps, so the kneecaps lift, tailbone tucks, and we squeeze the glutes. The lower back is therefore lengthened slightly. The rib cage is down. There's a tiny bit of kyphosis. Yeah, a tiny bit of natural kyphosis through the thoracic spine, okay, where the rib cage is. That enables us to breathe deeply. The shoulders are relaxed. Take a deep breath in and feel as though you're pulling breath into the back of the ribs. Exhaling here. Your core is active and your glutes are switched on. Tuck the chin in so that the back of the neck is long. And imagine that you're being lifted from the crown of the head. So we have a sense of lengthening. At the same time, we have a sense of groundedness through the feet. That is Tadasana. Please try to come back to this much attention to detail every time you revisit this pose. Release the arms, inhale, arms reach up, lengthen, and stretch away from the ground. As you exhale, bend the knees, fold forward, hinging at the hips. Use the strength of your flexion to pull you down as deep as possible. Inhale, halfway lift, look forward and lengthen. Hold the breath, plant the palms, and step back into a push-up position. Lower the knees if you need to, the chest and the chin, otherwise chaturanga, exhale. Inhale, either cobra or upward facing dog. Knees, hips, thighs come off. Exhale, use your abs to pull you back into downward facing dog. Releasing the feet, spread the fingers nice and wide. Take a deep breath in, one. Inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three, empty the lungs completely, bend your knees, look forward, and just step the feet up to the hands, we'll add the jump later. Halfway lift here, inhale, lengthen. Again, use the strength of your abs and everything that flexes to pull you in, exhale, and use the hands as a little bit of extra help. 
come up to standing, inhale, arms reach, flatten the back, strengthen the hamstrings, glutes squeeze, lengthen away from the earth, exhale, hands come back to the heart, relax the shoulders, release the arms, inhale, arms reach, exhale, fold forward, inhale, halfway, hold the breath, plant the palms, if you're jumping, keep the breath held, let's go, Bend the elbows, jump to chaturanga only. Inhale, cobra or up dog, knees, hips and thighs off. Exhale, use your abs to pull back, downward facing dog, that'll really pay off for your pressed handstands. Take a deep breath in, full breath out. Shake out your head, yes and no. Eyes gazed at one point, inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, bend your knees, look forward, either step or float the feet up to the top of the mat, halfway lift here, inhale, exhale, use your abs to pull yourself in, come up to standing, inhale, arms up, glutes squeeze, exhale, hands at the heart, relax the shoulders, find that Tadasana position we cultivated at the beginning, release the arms down, inhale, arms up, last one, exhale, fold forward, inhale, halfway, hold the breath, go for it, take your variation, exhale, inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog, squeeze in protecting the lower spine. Exhale, use your lower abs to curl your body back into down dog. We all meet together here, bring the feet together. Inhale, lift the right leg up high, but keep the hips square. Use your glutes to get that leg high. As you exhale, bring the knee towards the elbow. Come forward, shoulders come forward. Inhale, up. Same thing, hips are square. Exhale. Inhale, up. Exhale. This time, inhale up, open the hip and bend the knee. You can flip your dog if you'd like to. What you're gonna do, it looks freakier than it actually is, is you take the right hand off and this right foot comes down to the floor. As you do that, I want you to push your hips up and you'll get this delicious opening through that side body all the way through the front of the hip. Look back to the floor. We're all gonna join back in our three-legged dog and step that foot forward in between the hands. If it didn't make it all the way, grab your ankle, pull it further forward. You will get stronger and more mobile in that position and you'll be able to take that foot up high. Hold it here. Take your arms forward. Hold. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Good. Behind the head, sorry. Pull the rib cage in. I want you to be really loading up this glute and this leg. If you're only feeling your quadricep, try moving your knee back a little. Notice my shin is vertical. Keep the ribs in, lift the chest. Good, from here, keep the ribs down, feeling a little bit of a stretch, the back of the left leg. Left arm comes down, inhale, reach it up and over. If you can, take the right hand down to the back of the left leg. Yeah, and then maybe around the outside and start to open up and back. From there, you're gonna hook your left elbow on the outside of the right knee. Maybe you're gonna bring the palms together for the twist, but if you do do that, you need to make sure that you're also squeezing the left leg. So squeeze the left glute and the leg as much as you can to protect your spine. Twisting here, hold. Come back to center, inhale. We're gonna try and transition to Skandasana. So, did you see what happened? I twist around to the front and I'm gonna to start to drop my hip down. This is similar to a Cossack squat. I'm gonna keep my hands in prayer if I can, pushing that knee out. Those of you that are absolutely burning your thigh, that's okay. I wanna get a little bit of that burn. Big isometric holds so that when we come into pigeon, keep holding, I'm right here with you. We actually get some, some stretch there, but under load. That's how we build mobility. Keep holding. Hands come down to the floor. We'll come back into push-up position. Keep that right leg lifted, lower down. Inhale, open it up. Exhale, downward facing dog, press back. Okay, left leg lifts. Remember, don't open the hip yet. Keep 
it square. Come in, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. This time, inhale, open it out. Now you can stay here. Yes, yeah, some of you are already feeling enough of a stretch, or we can move all the way. Flipping the dog, push to lift your hips, reach back. You get a stretch all the way down through the front. Come back into push up. We all meet and bring that foot forward into the lunge. Okay? Okay, nice strong core, pull the ribs in, back leg is strong, arms reach forward, hold. Press into the foot, hand comes to the back of the head or interlace behind the head. Breathe, lifting the body. Okay, from here, release, right hand down. Take it up and over to the side, getting a further side stretch here. Left hand comes behind you. Wrap it around the outside of the right leg. Reach up and back, and then from there, come down. Hook the elbow on the outside of that right left knee. Bring the palms together. Twist. Holding it here, belly pulls in. Remember to squeeze that right glute. Yeah? Come back to center. Now we transition to Skandasana. So I turn out my foot. This foot flattens. I'm gonna face you so it's not just my big old ass in the camera, like so. And holding down here. Both my legs are active. Hands in prayer, and I can use this left elbow to push this left knee out. This is key, okay? Making sure that everything through the adductors is nice and active. Maybe some of you are up here. That's cool too. Okay, hold. And let's come back to center, find our push up, and then step it back. Lower it down. Inhale, open it up. Either cobra or up dog, exhale. Downward facing dog, press back. All right, shake out your head, yes and no. And from here, right leg lifts up. Open the hip, bend the knee, maybe flip your dog. Reach up. Look down. From there, we're gonna bring the knee to the back of the wrist. Pigeon pose. Back leg moves further back behind you. Those of you that feel really confused about pigeon, you can totally, totally put something underneath your butt to just keep you a little bit more upright. But you know what? If you fall off to the side a little, it's okay, provided you're still feeling a hip opening, okay? As though you're feeling that tissue around the glute stretch. Now from here, we're gonna come down to the floor, folding forward, maybe placing our forehead onto the back of a block or all the way down to the floor if you don't have your block or cushion. And we're just gonna breathe here. Inhaling and exhaling, but I want you to feel like you're breathing through the back body. Now some of you are gonna need to keep your hands on the floor for this next part. I'd like you to point your bottom foot so that it's active. Lift your head off the block or the floor and just hold into the fingertips here. Firm up your belly. So draw the belly in and pull your ribs down. Now you can stay here or you can take your arms out to the side. And we're gonna hold here for 10, nine. At the same time, I want you to think about pushing the knee down. Imagine someone's pushing your back down, you're resisting them. And I almost want you to feel like you're trying to lift this back leg off the floor. It probably won't lift, ugh, <laughs> but you're trying. Three, two, one, bring it up. Good, from here, hands come down to the floor. Step it back, downward facing dog. Walk out through the heels. Other side, left leg, lift it up. Open the hip, bend the knee, flip it. Reach back, oh, it's so good. And then come into pigeon, left side. Okay, holding here. Oh, it's juicy, it's more juicy. Okay, so you're either gonna place this underneath or if it's fine, you can come down. And as you come down, far on the floor, and we're just gonna have a passive stretch here, breathing in and breathing out, trying to calm the nervous system. If you can't access a calm, slow, deep breath in the yoga practice, 
it sort of defeats the purpose a little bit. Okay, it just becomes a sort of another form of weird exercise. We don't need any more of those, there's plenty out there. Instead, we wanna really access the benefits of yoga and so much of those lie in the way in which you're breathing. Okay, so head off. Maybe it's just fingertips and maybe you're gonna stay like this. Maybe you can take your hands off. Whatever variation you've chosen, remember we're squeezing the back glute because we're trying to lift this leg off the floor. At the same time, we're pushing down the whole shin, the leg into the floor. Someone's pushing on my back and I'm trying to resist. Four, three, two, and one. Bring it up, hands to the floor. Step back, downward dog. Walk out through the heels, open up through the back of the legs. Shake out your head, yes and no, and then we'll come forward into a push-up position. Lower down, exhale. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, use your abs to pull back into downward facing dog. Drop the knees to the floor. I'm gonna turn side on, we're gonna work in the thighs, and this is the last one here, okay? So what I'm actually gonna do is bring the knees out nice and wide and sit just in front of my heels as much as I can. Now I'm super open through my hips, so this is possible for me. It might not be possible for you, and it also requires quite a bit of internal rotation as well of your femur, okay? which is intense. If you're feeling any torque through the knees, stop. Another option, sit on the block. From there, I'm gonna to start to come forward. And then I'm just gonna smile and take myself to a happy place. Now that's really important because if you come into this position and you panic, you get that nervous system response, the sympathetic side, and suddenly, oh, what happens? Your body tightens up. So we need to be able to find a passive position the breath will take you there. Slow exhalation to facilitate the release. Now, I don't know whether you've picked up on the pattern here, but whatever we do that's passive, we have to do it actively too, okay? Because we don't want to just increase your stretch tolerance. We want to increase the tissue capacity to hold these positions, okay? Breathe in, otherwise we'll just get injured. And breathe out. Breathe in, still passive, breathe out. Alrighty, now to take it into a more active position, we're actually gonna come out of this position. So I'm gonna get you to pull yourself forward. The best way is actually forward. And then as you come forward, let your legs come off and just scoot your legs back in together, okay? From here, we're gonna come into that skandhasana position. So take the right leg out to the side, bend the knee as though you're in a sort of half squat and then extend your left leg out. Now, if you're super flexible and mobile, you may find that you can come all the way down into this position, okay? If that's you, come into this variation. We're gonna be going from here to here, from here to here, and we're taking 10 reps on each leg. If that is not you, right? I can feel a hair in my mouth, oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> it's like right in the worst bit. Yep, there it is, okay, cool, good times. So. If you're here, this is your mobility, that's totally fine. You're gonna be here and working the lateral lunge as deep as you possibly can, okay? So let's go, we have 10 reps on each leg. Come down to your deepest position, let's go. One, two, three, four, by the way, these toes can come off, five, or you can keep them flat. Six, slightly different. Seven, eight, nine, and the last one, I just want you to hold for five, four, three, we're turning into the lunge, two, one. Let's set up with the vinyasa in between just to reset our breath, lower down. Inhale, open it up. Exhale, downward facing dog, press back. Walk the feet up to the hands. Bend your knees, hang forward, unroll all the way up to standing. Arms reach, inhale. Exhale, hands to the heart. All right, we've got to do it on the other side. <laughs> Did you think I was going to forget? Probably not. Especially if this is your second or third time doing this video. Okay. We 
down here, if you can. Or you're up here. And guess what? Sometimes it's not just the hip. Sometimes it's your ankle mobility, okay? We'll get to that in another session. Let's go. 10, nine, eight, seven. Keep the knee tracking out. Six, that's a lot of glute. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's bring it down. Step back into the push up. Lower down. Exhale. Inhale. Squeeze the glute. Open the chest. Exhale. Child's pose. Take a deep breath in. Release a full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. Coming all the way out. And that is the end of the practice. Please feel free to turn right over and take Shavasana. Relaxing for five or ten minutes. Otherwise, I'll see you on the mat next time. Well done and namaste. Just take those old records off the shelf. Hi, how was that? How'd you go? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe because you know what? Why would you not want more of these videos in and around your inbox? The other thing I wanted to say is if you are actually really serious about getting results, whether that be fitness results or mobility results, don't forget to head to my website, it's right there, and check out my programs because they involve what's called progressive overload. On YouTube, there's just way too much like program hopping and workout hopping. You need to be sticking to something very consistently in order to see results. So go check those babies out. I know you're gonna like them.